In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up employees and contractors when using Bookkeeper Advanced Payroll. By now, you should have all the company information set up so that employees and contractors have access to those options. To start, click on Payroll from the Bookkeeper menu and then select Manage Employees or click on the Manage Employees icon on the Bookkeeper homepage. The Employee List window will show all active employees. You can also include terminated employees by selecting the checkbox in the upper right corner. A shortcut menu option is available to entering a timesheet or creating a payroll check for one employee. By clicking once on an employee, a pop-up menu appears that will take you directly to timesheets or a payroll run just for that employee. Double-clicking on an employee will bring up the employee detail. I'll select an employee that is already set up but has not been run through a payroll cycle yet. The Employee Detail window is broken out into several tabs. The Demographic tab contains basic employee information. I won't go into detail as the fields are self-explanatory, but you are required to enter at least a last name, state, and social security number. The Employment tab contains specific information about the employee's job. I'll just point out some of the key fields. The Payroll Cycle field identifies which payroll run this employee will be placed into. Though you can always create paychecks for employees individually, placing employees into payroll cycles and running payroll for that cycle results in much faster processing. The payroll cycles in the list are the ones that are set up for the company. To add a new cycle, go into the Company Setup window and add the cycle there. It will then appear in the drop-down here. For timesheet type, you can specify the default timesheet layout for this employee. You can always change the layout when creating timesheets. This field is just a default value. More detail about timesheet types is available in the help file or in the Entering Timesheets video tutorial. The Total Paid Hours Per Week field is required for any employee that will have a salary wage type. It is not required for hourly employees. The drop-down contains a list of values to choose from, or you can enter a specific number of hours. In the Paycheck Information section, you can indicate how you would like the employee's name to print on the check, as well as indicating information to be displayed in the Check Memo field. The Wage and Time Off tab is where you select the earning types for this employee, as well as the time off entitlements. The earning types are broken into three categories, hourly, salary, and supplemental. The options available for selection are based on what is set up for the company. Select the appropriate wage type and enter in the salary or hourly amount for the employee. If the wage type had a default value set for the company, it will automatically display. You can override that amount if necessary. If there are supplemental wage options for this employee, you can select them. Setting a default amount will cause this supplemental wage amount to be set for every payroll run. If you set it to zero, you can set the amount during the payroll run when necessary. To set any exemptions for any of these wage types, simply scroll the slider to show federal, state, and FICA exemption options. If you have salaried employees with time off wage options, such as vacation, the hourly rate for that wage option is automatically computed based on the annual salary amount. Notice as I change the annual amount, the hourly rate automatically recomputes. This computed value is the hourly rate of the annual salary and will be used to compute the time off wage when entered during a payroll run. This hourly amount can be overridden if necessary. The Time Off section is where you will indicate all time off options this employee is entitled to. The list is based on what has been set up for the company, but you can select the options available just for this employee. By default, the rate of accrual values are carried forward from the company setup, but can be overridden if necessary. In the Hours Earned Per Accrual rate, 
enter the number of hours that will be earned based on the rate of accrual. If this time off option does not accrue time or is unpaid time off, select those options as well. In the max hours entitled per year, enter the total number of hours that this employee can earn. If there is no cap, set the amount to zero. In the max hours carried over per year, enter the total amount of hours that can be carried forward to the next year. Note that the carry forward process is handled through the company setup and must be run prior to the first payroll run for the calendar year. In the Taxes tab, all available taxes that were set up for the company will be displayed in the list. By default, all federal taxes are selected as well as the state taxes for the employee's home state. You can deselect any tax that does not apply to this employee. Clicking on a tax in the list will show a list of tax options. This is where you would set filing status, exemptions, or any other options available for that tax. In the Deductions tab, you will see the list of deductions that were set up for the company. Select the applicable deductions and set the necessary values in the Details section. Any default values that were set up for the deduction at the company level will be carried forward but can be overridden. For more in-depth explanation of the deduction detail fields, please review the company setup video or refer to the help file. The Custom Fields tab allows you to enter ancillary information about the employee. Clicking on the field label will let you define what that field will be called for all employees. For example, if I wanted to track whether this employee has been issued a company laptop in the first field, I would click on the link to open the company information window and enter what I would like the label to be called into the first field for the employee custom fields. When I click OK, the field label for the first field is now set for all employees. The Year to Date tab shows all earnings, deduction, tax, and time off accumulations for the current year. This information can be printed by clicking on the Print button in the lower left corner. For new employees, this tab will initially be blank. Clicking the Save button will save all employee information and redisplay this tab with all wage, tax, deduction, and time off fields so that you can enter year to date information. Year to date information can be entered in the screen up until this employee has been run through a payroll cycle or year-to-date information has been entered. So if you create a new employee and do not enter year-to-date information at that time, you can come back and enter the values later as long as you haven't processed them in a payroll run. For employees that have been run through a payroll cycle, this tab will be read-only. However, to make time off adjustments, an adjust button will be visible in the upper right allowing you to make any necessary adjustments. Once you have completed all information on all tabs, click the OK or Save buttons to save the employee information. Now we will set up a contractor. From the Payroll menu option, select Manage Contractors. Similar to employees, the list will show all active contractors and terminated contractors can be included in the list by clicking on the box in the upper right. The Contractor Detail window is also broken out into different tabs. The Demographics tab contains contact information about the contractor. The Employment tab is similar to the one for the employee setup, the main difference being the Tax ID number field which is required for contractors. The Wage tab is simpler than that for employees since only hourly wage types are available for selection. The list of hourly wages is what has been defined at the company level. Here you select the wage and enter the hourly rate. For new contractors, the year-to-date fields are available for entry. Lastly, the Custom Fields tab works the same way as for employees. Once you've entered all contractor information, click OK to save. Now that employees and contractors are set up, you can run a payroll cycle. If you need additional assistance, please refer to the bookkeeper help file.